Hey everyone, this is George Kuros, and I actually want to welcome you to something I'm going to try that's a little bit different. Um, I, I always try to think differently or in different ways um, to kind of revamp this podcast, not only for the listener, but for myself. I want to try some different things. And uh, I, I wanted, uh, I really kind of try to focus on reading more books, like actual physical books. And I find that, you know, through that, it's really kind of helped calm me down. I, I really used to like reading stuff on Kindle because it's real easy, easily accessible. I travel quite a bit, but I wanted to kind of shift and start reading physical books. And I, I, I make jokes about, you know, people that like sniffing books and things like that too. And so I kind of, I'm like eating my own words here, but um yeah i wanted to just try something different and but i wanted to talk about them because i think when you actually try to make some of your own connections um to the stuff you're reading i think that's when you really get to understand it on a deeper level so recording this podcast is not only beneficial hopefully to you and maybe you find another book maybe you want to share but uh also uh that you that it gets me thinking a lot more about this stuff so here's before um we start even the podcast a couple things first of all um since it's new if you comment below a takeaway something you liked uh i'm gonna actually share a couple signed copies of the innovators mindset but you got to comment on youtube and you gotta subscribe so um those two things but also i like having um theme music for different segments and so um, I'm just kind of looking at what I have on my, on my board. So I'm going to call this the Epic Book Review. So welcome to George Kuros's Epic Book Review. <laughs> is that, is that, uh, I don't know if it likes that. I like that song. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I just, I heard it when the Raptors won. Uh, I saw it on a TV show. They're playing it over and over again. So is that going to be a theme song going for it? Maybe. We'll see. Comment below. Do you like the the theme music of the epic book review? I don't know if I'm going to call it that, but whatever. So the book I actually want to talk about today is actually uh, by Ryan Holiday and it is called The Obstacle is the Way. And Ryan Holiday, uh, you might know of him. He's the guy who does the Daily Stoic. Really great advice, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, the idea of using the Stoics, really kind of focusing on really kind of traditional, um, old school philosopher thinking, and really how does it apply to our world today? And it, I, when even just thinking about that concept, a lot of times, uh, you know, obviously I'm known for innovation, uh, really kind of thinking about new and different ways to learn stuff, but I don't think that actually negates tradition. I think that there's a ton of stuff that we can learn from traditional practices and how they apply today. And, you know, we're so much better than what it was in the past, but yet those traditions have lasted years and years and years. So there's something about that that really kind of made me think about that concept. So um, really, this I think this book was uh, originally written in, in uh, 2014, from what I remember. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just share um some of the quotes and some of the things that stuck with me and just kind of give you some of my input. And I've been capturing some of these quotes, even though I've been reading this on paper, I've, I do like to kind of write notes for myself. Um, so I have access to some of these things and, and what they actually mean to me. And I think this quote from the book really kind of summarizes what the book's about. Um, Ryan Holiday says this, you know, this is how obstacles become obstacles. In other words, through our perception of events, we are complicit in the creation as well as the destruction of every one of our obstacles. There is no good or bad without us. There is only perception. There is the event itself and the story we tell ourselves about what it means. That's a thought that changes everything, doesn't it? And so basically, this kind of this, this idea of something that happens to us, thinking about it, it's, things that happen to us are often neutral, just the event itself. But the, the way we perceive the event could actually um, really change the way we move forward or the way we move backward. And I'll, I'll give you an example in my own personal life. Uh, I was really terrified to, to, to leave a job uh, in education earlier where I wasn't really happy or struggling. And all the things that I, uh, I looked forward to uh, or I was nervous about, you know, not knowing where my paycheck would come in, uh, you know, 
maybe am I leaving the profession? I put so many years into this and struggling with that. So I kind of focused on the things I wouldn't actually have. But what I started to shift my thinking about was what new opportunities is going to create for myself? How is this going to actually pressure me to do something in a different way and maybe recreate, remodel myself? And so you, you take that event that is, is terrifying. And I think that kind of sometimes holds us back. And one of the quotes I've, I'm known for is the idea of change is an opportunity to do something amazing. So when we look at this, even sometimes when negative change actually happens, how do we redirect that in our own sense to make things, uh, you know, in a positive way. And even just kind of thinking about as I'm talking through this, uh, when COVID actually happened, uh, I remember because I traveled so much, that was my, my work. I, I remember that very first day that when, when all my events started, and I know there's not a day of COVID, right. But like the, the first day that it started affecting me where all my events were starting to get canceled. I started thinking like, oh my God, this is happening. This is happening. Like, I'm going to have a really hard time with this. And then I kind of felt sorry for myself. And then the next day I said, well, look, if, if I talk to people about innovation, but I can't actually deal with something that's negative or the, the perception of it to be negative, if I can't flip this, um, then I'm going to struggle with this. And so even though that time happened, I, I utilized that time to really rethink how I want to be not only as an educator, but I think more importantly, as a parent, uh, as a family person and, and really taking care of my own health. So I, I saw that time to kind of reinvent some of the things I was doing and really kind of reshape my thinking. So that event happened and like somebody, I remember saying this and when you, when you think about this, this, this might rub people some the wrong way, but again, it's your perception of it. When people say, Oh, because of COVID, and I remember someone correct saying, no, 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 it wasn't because of COVID. It was because of our reaction to COVID. And that's a, those are two different things, right? COVID is an event. Our reaction was something else. And that, that was something that really kind of resonated with me and why I kind of, you know, appreciate this book. Now, talking about this, I know a lot of people easily will say, oh, okay, this kind of fits into toxic positivity, blah, blah, blah. And I think he actually, Holiday, one of the things he shares that I, I find really compelling is that if this is, and he says this, this is one of his quotes. He says, um, this is not to be positive, but learn to be ceaseless, ceaselessly creative and opportunistic. Not, this is not so bad, but I can make this good because it can be done. In fact, it has, and it is being done every day. That's the power we will unlock in this book. So when you think of it that way, um, how do we actually, how do we take some of these things and really kind of reshift our thinking uh, about this and, and and how we actually kind of move forward? And it's not that bad things or our perception of things are bad can't happen to us, but really it's not about not acknowledging that. There are some events, you know, even in my life, people's lives that they have actually taken and said, okay, I'm going to take this and re- uh, think this in a way that can actually be positive to me. So I, I love this. I'll, I'll repeat again. Not this is not so bad, but I can make this good. And I just I love that quote. I think it's um, really, really interesting. Um, the next quote I want to share with you uh, is kind of going back um, to kind of shifting how we perceive things. And this is actually like when I when I read this part of the book, one of the things that resonated with me is kind of, this is like the Michael Jordan mentality. Michael Jordan uh, is, is known to basically just create stuff in his head, like create obstacles, like things that he has to overcome. And so he's like famous for that. Uh, like even in the, the documentary, The Last Dance, he says like, and I took that personally, and he says it over and over again. And there's actually a really great story um, in the documentary about, some player saying something to him, you know, as he was walking out and then the next night, Michael Jordan, just totally obliterating, uh, that player in a game and just, you know, going off and scoring. And then years later is found out Michael Jordan, like just made it up and he like made up that obstacle or something he wanted to kind of overcome. And so this is like, kind of like the spite factor, you know, it's kind of like, like, how do you kind of take some of the negative things and actually use them as fuel? And, and he says, Holiday says this, when people are 
rude or disrespectful, they under, underestimate us a huge advantage. When people are conniving, we don't have to apologize when we make an example out of them. When people are critical or question our abilities, lower expectations are easier to exceed. When people are lazy, it makes whatever we accomplish seem all the more admirable, right? And and I, I love that. One of the things I thought about when looking at that quote is uh, I know many administrators who have gone into schools and they'll say, oh, like, you know, the culture is really bad here. Um, there's a lot of issues before the staff didn't necessarily like the principal, you know, and so there's some really negative things. And I've said this over and over again. Well, then that's awesome because it can't get any worse. It'd probably be way harder to follow someone that was amazing. So they're, they're, it's kind of like creating some of those obstacles in our head and like, how do we kind of shift that, right? I One of the things I love doing is going into um, opening days and doing speaking events because typically when you do um, a school district versus like a conference, conferences, people pay to be there. They want to be there. They're excited about that. But on school district days, they're like, oh, like we got to do this PD and we're going to shift this. And I actually use that as fuel. It's like, I want someone who's never heard of me is like a little bit grumpy about being here. And maybe because of past perceptions of like how that PD was. And what I want to do is actually shift them and go, that was amazing. Like that was actually really surprising. And one of my favorite things, uh, I actually was working with students last week and a lot of them came out to me and this was the common word that I heard was this one, actually. They would say, that was actually really good. And when they say actually, that means they were expecting it was to be terrible, right? And I know this, I know that. And it's it's that opportunity to really kind of help change perception that someone actually maybe sees you in a little bit worse light. Maybe someone doesn't have certain expectations from, from you uh, and they lower the bar. And that's a great opportunity to exceed and blow them away in how amazing you are um, in, in the work that you're doing. The next quote, and this is actually um, one of the, Ryan Holiday talk, talks about the Stoics this is from a Marcus Aurelius. And he says, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. One of the reasons I wrote Innovate Inside the Box is, is a lot of times in education, we actually have this idea that, oh, we need to think outside the box, but it's actually acknowledging there are constraints that we do in education. And like, think of it this way. When in education, have you ever been in this profession where school districts were like, wow, we have so much money. It's never happened, right? And it probably never will happen. It should happen. And we need to really rethink about how we fund education, uh, fund things in a different way. But part of it is actually saying, okay, here's an issue that we're dealing with. How do we actually recreate this in a better way? How do we kind of shift our thinking you know, because of this constraint, what does that actually, what does that actually do for us? Right. So I, I often talk about this notion of like how we need to really think, rethink um, the curriculum um, and, and teach in innovative ways that really kind of acknowledge the student, really build in their strengths and passions. But I don't ever say don't teach the curriculum because I understand that is a constraint that we do actually have to deal with. And part of it too is some people will look at that and say, well, you're just kind of accept, accepting the system as it is. And we need to like drastically change that. And I get that. I do agree with that. But I think sometimes the best way to change the system is working within the system and actually recreating stuff where people start to re-envision how we can think of things that we do in education, outside of education, and really kind of showing and leading by example. A lot of times people will not embrace something new until they, they see something actually working within that system. And then they start to shift their perspective. And when someone says, oh, we need to like, you know, really recreate school, we need to do this. I think part of it is that to what? What would that actually look like? And so sometimes what we need to do is actually create within that system something that looks way better. That's something that's creating, uh, you know, creates way better. Uh, talking about assessments, when we hear about, oh, like we're really test driven and all, it's all about scores. And then like, we're too much testing and acknowledging that, hey, there is expectations of, you know, education systems to say like, hey, this is what, how we're doing. So if you're going to say, let's get rid of tests, my question would be, so to what? And that's part of the answer they have to make. And so when we are actually addressing that in, in my own school district, uh, 
it was like, okay, I know we know we have to do tests. We know we have to do this, but can we create portfolios to give kids different opportunities? Still, you know, still acknowledge that we have to do these tests, but can we actually really develop our students as amazing learners through this portfolio, which will actually help them be focused on tests? Or are we just going to help our students become really great test takers? And so it's kind of acknowledging some of the constraints um, that we actually look for in, in education and how they can actually become an opportunity if we shift that. And so um, that quote from Marcus Aurelius really kind of sticks out. All right, the next the next quote I want to focus on was kind of it's just a short one liner. Sometimes these ones kind of stick with you the most. Ryan Holiday says, stop looking for angels and start looking for angles. And that's a really interesting quote. This idea that wh who when we talk about and this, is, I you know, kind of going back to this notion of the system, I always say this, you know, when we say the system, it's not like elves somewhere that are like controlling it or the wizard of oz the system is always made up of people and when we always look to people outside of education to solve the problem often they create it and how do we look at our own constraints I, you know as a principal one of the things that i would say is that i'm really uh, i really want to create an amazing incredible experience within the public education system that if you had the opportunity to choose this is where you'd want to go and that's how you kind of look at it as opposed to looking for someone outside to, you know, shift that thinking for parents, for community. Uh, how do I actually become the solution to some of these problems as opposed to hoping someone else will do this for you? And, and that I know it's like a really subtle quote, the idea, stop looking for angels and start looking for angles. What are the leverage points that you have? What are the what what is the. Uh, the the control that you have in a situation katie martin uh does a really great job of kind of talking about like how do i actually within the work that i do leverage some of these opportunities to create really incredible opportunities for the kids that I actually um that i serve so that that idea stop looking for angels and start looking for angles how do you actually have control to create some really great opportunities moving forward as opposed to hoping someone else will save you uh, this next really short quote from Ryan Holiday resonated with me. He says, acknowledge the pain, but trod onward in your task. Again, this goes back to that notion that it's not that we can't perceive things as being bad. If you really truly think about it, how much has complaining solved in our world today? Complaining is maybe part of it. Sometimes we need to like vent, get things out. And, but also like, how do we actually find a solution for it? And here's like a, a really simple thing that I, I do with um, schools and districts that I work with. And there's a psychology uh, behind it. When I'll talk, I'll share some stuff that challenges people, you know, and makes them feel uncomfortable, really kind of maybe question some stuff. But I know there's stuff that I really try to make sure that they feel valued in this day. And so I ask these three questions. And I get them to have conversations about it and focus on it. But it's not just the three questions. It's the order that I ask them in. And what I typically ask is, what has challenged you today? What has been reaffirmed? And what will you do moving forward? So the reason I say, like, what I start with, what has challenged you today, is because I want to make sure that we address some of the stuff that we're struggling with, some of the stuff that we're having a hard time with so that there is that space to kind of share this stuff. So that's that idea of like acknowledging the pain. I get that. But the second question is, okay, what's been reaffirmed? Like, okay, so let's kind of shift. Okay. So we we've had that opportunity now. What, like, what is some good stuff? What are some stuff that we're like really excited about? What are some of the strengths that we already have that we can kind of tap into? And then the third question is what we do moving forward. And it's kind of like, how do we actually move forward toward action and actually doing something because of the time that we actually had together? And I was actually talking to a group of educators this past week. And I said to them that in my work as, you know, someone who works with schools and districts and, you know, works as kind of a consultant, a speaker, one of the things that I do not miss is the meetings that we do in education. Because sometimes we would have meetings about meetings that we would eventually have so we would have a meeting to talk about the future meeting and one of the things that we did in my school was actually it was learned it was a covey concept it's called cadence of accountability so we would say okay and it's not like meetings are useless but again what's the leverage here are, what are we doing with that time how are we ensuring that we've actually valued that time by creating solutions as we move forward 
And so the cadence of accountability is like, okay, here's the things we're talking about today. So by the end of the meeting, what are we going to do by the next time that we meet? So that cadence of accountability would actually say, here's the things we're going to do next week or the next time we meet before that time. And so we created that cadence of accountability. So then at the beginning of the next meeting, you actually talk about what we shared the last meeting and the actions that you took and how they actually went. And so that's how actually it started. So you're actually ensuring that that time is used um, is used and evaluate. And you're, as you know, as Holly says, trot onward in your task, we are creating something because of that time together. And I think one of the things that people in education really get frustrated with, and rightfully so, is that we, we can talk a lot and we can go through things. And some people say, okay, you know, like, I just need some time to process. And sometimes that's a delay tactic that we just say that to like, hopefully we won't come back to this. But just kind of sharing stuff, but not actually finding solutions or finding a way forward, trotting odd word in our task doesn't necessarily help. So I, I really kind of resonate with me shared that. So this is the last quote that I want to share from Holiday's book. And it is this one. It's much easier to control our perceptions and emotions than it is to give up our desire to control other people and events. It's easier to persist in our efforts and actions than to endure the uncomfortable or the painful. It's easier to think and act than it is to practice wisdom. These lessons come harder, but are in the end, the most critical to wrestling advantage from adversity. That's one of the things that I really kind of took out of this book was really kind of how important it is that we start to see events as events and how we react to them as the most important element, because I can't control some events. I can't control some things that actually happen, but what I can control is what I do because of it, what I do. And it's not to say that we can't struggle. It's can't, it's not to say that we can't have hard days that we do this, but at the end of the day, the event itself is not necessarily the end point. It might be the starting point. Sometimes when I've been really frustrated in my work, sometimes when I kind of say like, Hey, this is not working for me, then it actually, instead of continuing on, I see it as a, as an opportunity to actually create something new to start a different space. Even thinking about doing this podcast today, I, I sometimes feel that I'm, I'm struggling. I'm, I feel like a little stuck. So let's try something new. And so instead of just kind of being in the stuck in the rut, I said, this is actually a leverage point to create something new. And so I, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, I think, I think that taking the time to kind of talk about it and just kind of connect with it, uh, really is kind of saying like, how does this apply to my life? And I, I find that's really valuable. I'd rather read fewer books and then make these connections and really kind of think deeply about this stuff than just read the book and then move on to the next one. Cause I think actually taking information and not creating something with it doesn't really make us connect. And so, uh, this is actually a, a book I, I would recommend. It's an easy read, uh, you know, some great ideas. Uh, might not be for everybody, but I, I liked it. I'll actually link it down below if you're interested in picking it up uh, on Amazon. And like I said, comment below what stuck out to you and uh, we'll, we'll get you. Well, I'll send out a couple signed books um, based on some of the comments below. Thanks for listening to Epic Book Review. We might have to pick a new theme song. Hey, if you got a new theme song, let me know down below. Have a wonderful day. Take care.